People's Platform. Good evening and welcome to the People's Platform. Now, the tourism sector of Sri Lanka has gone through an avalanche of issues. Sri Lanka's economic crisis last year, the COVID-19 pandemic, the Easter Sunday attacks, a 26-year-long ethnic conflict, two insurrections, and these are massive traumas that the Sri Lankan people have had to endure. How must Sri Lanka's tourism sector now be reimagined? Let's find out. We've invited to our studios Chalaka Gajabahu. He is the chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau. Good evening and welcome, Chalaka. Good evening, Sonali. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Wonderful to have you here in the studio with us. Uh, Chalaka, when we speak about um, the recovery mm -hmm. of tourism, uh, ensuring that uh, the negative publicity that has been um, sort of given to Sri Lanka through global media campaigns, etc. How must we now position ourselves in a strategic manner so that Sri Lankan tourism can be featured as, mm. uh, as a feasible uh, destination for international tourists? Very good, very good question. Because, you know, like you very correctly said, uh, especially, if, you know, if you uh, uh, take COVID out of the equation, because the whole uh, world went through the COVID crisis, and especially the tourist destinations. Uh, but then soon after that, uh, Sri Lanka had to face, go through the economic crisis we had last year. And you very correctly said the three months, how media portrayed us all over the world. Yes, that's a rightful thing for any media organization to do. But, uh, you know, uh, what I want to say is changing the mindset of the people, it's not easy. Even though, uh, I don't know whether you still watch international media, even if they want to sh uh, show something positive about Sri Lanka, they have to show what happened uh, last year. Uh, in e still even on international networks it's in their trailers as well you know what happened in Sri Lanka uh, and so forth uh, at the same time uh, especially in European countries the travel advisories played a huge role because insurance plays a big, uh, big role as well when they have to come to Sri Lanka so us taking over last in, in, in last year June along with our Honorable Minister Mr. Harin Fernando our first task was actually to convince the, uh, the, the B2B co consumer rather than the B2C because we uh, when we look at it, even we, when we talk to our partners globally, or uh, forget about globally, you know, even uh, next door to India, they've traveled many a times with CEOs, the chairman of travel agencies and companies. The first question they ask is, when we, last year I'm talking about whether you have fuel, whether you have food, uh, whether you have medicine, you know, so the, as, as a task, the first thing we did was let's go to our next door neighbor, which is India, which is our biggest market. Mm -hmm. And we do, did uh, three road shows there in Mumbai, Delhi and uh, Bangalore and followed by three other road shows as well. So that was the starting point for us. But at the same time, it's not easy to convince people, even if you get the corporates to come in and you know uh, experience Sri Lanka, that that image, that the black mark that was created is not easy to uh, take it out. That's what I'm saying. We are not bringing goods into Sri Lanka. Have we moved beyond damage Abs control? I, I think we are we are there because what we did was we started this program called Seeing is Believing, an influencer program with our key, key seven, eight markets. So we bring in influencers from media groups, uh, social media networks and all that. So those uh, we took up with a thousand member influencer program already. We have uh, had about 150 to 200 influencers coming into Sri Lanka and talking positivity which is the reality of Sri Lanka and it has worked and at the same time uh, our social media plus our uh, travel network fairs uh, with the private sector along with the private sector has played a very positive uh, image about the Sri Lanka situation right now. Uh, Chalaka, when we speak of um, our neighboring countries, we see how Thailand has, for example, stepped mm. up its tourism promotion measures yeah. through its yeah. 5F uh, foundations, Correct. food, film, festival, fashion and fight. Um, if we take uh, other countries like Vietnam, wellness uh, tourism, uh, we have so many aspects in Sri Lanka which go beyond taking tourists to the cultural triangle or to Sigiriya or the tea factories. Yeah. Um, so speak to us about what you at the helm of Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau have done to promote adventure tourism, for example, um, surfing, history tourism, religious tourism. We have so many shipwrecks, um, wildlife, rainforests. We have a plethora of beautiful fascinating magical spaces and places yeah. 
but people don't know this because sri lanka isn't marketed in a positive light at all Absolute. what have you done absolutely i totally agree with you there's nothing wrong about that because the thing is we don't have a brand brand footprint unlike our competing market you're talking about thailand yes they have never changed their st- tourism marketing strategy amazing thailand incredible india mm-hmm. uh, 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 truly malaysia you know they have not changed it for 20 30 years but sri lanka every two years whether it's a government or whether it's a minister or whether it's a chairman then the the marketing strategy changes and they have we have never i will go on record to say we have not done a global campaign for 15 years or so uh, or a proper brand footprint has not been created to answer to your question you are talking about wellness you are talking about adventure you are talking about romance everything yes we have for my, my one line brief when we are briefing the agencies we are an all in one capsule minus the snow that is sri lanka of course mm-hmm. our competing markets has it but then this is sri lanka it's an island it's a small bit of it's a small space that you can have all this yes we have not identified our umbrella brand position that is very important and the categories and for example adventure can be broken into so many sub categories so our biggest task that we are going to do is coming come january this year to launch this new bla- brand platform the campaign uh, the thing is you can't look at a campaign just by a tagline that does not justify you know whether you call whatever the tagline mm-hmm. whether it's amazing thailand or incredible india or it doesn't ma- mean anything when you say incredible india you want need to show what incredible india is you need to show who sri lanka is mm-hmm. and a tourism image of a, of a country can actually build the image of the country overall as well so that is my task actually that campaign is in uh, progress right now it's in production right now the global campaign will be launched end of january early february uh, it will done through a tender process and uh, one agency won that uh, pitch and they are going ahead with it mm-hmm. and yes it's a new tagline but the tagline won't do any justice until you see the actual strategy and the creative behind it mm-hmm. uh, that will to to justification to take that message forward again very clearly we are an all in one capsule being an island a lot of people like you very correct we are only like sun and sea we are not only sun and sea we have everything 140 shipwrecks and uh, you know cnn recently said uh, uh, jaffna is one of the most hid- biggest hidden treasures uh, in the world top 20 mm-hmm. uh, and then instagram we are the number 7 instagramable nation in the world so all this we need to take it forward in a very positive manner chalaka tourism can uh, cannot be done in a vacuum or in isolation yeah. there needs to be a lot of uh, interconnectedness uh, collaborative work done between ministries government departments how has your relationship been at the bureau with the other key stakeholders again a very important question it's very important whether it's wildlife whether it's aviation whether it's marine that all needs to you know uh, put their hands together and work towards it because tourism alone in its on its own can't do it that's why there has been a interministerial committee that been been appointed to sort those pro- for example you know the tickets uh, for trains uh, you know there are issues then uh, for example uh, uh, the national parks the the entry points you know sometimes you have massive queues so you you know very re- recently two months ago uh, uh, when his excellency was uh, he visited for opening of a new five star hotel in yala where uh, he went and visited the park and we are going to suggest a new digital system for ticketing you know to fast track this process mm. like in other countries look at african nations how they have developed themselves they, they only have adventure but we have all the other aspects we have not done it properly so that process and then there's a mass 10 year master plan that has been developed mm-hmm. by within the four uh, association within the tourism ministry which is sri lanka tourism Deve- led by sri lanka tourism development authority mm-hmm. uh, then sri lanka tourism promotion bureau the convention bureau and uh, slidham which is the hotel school the 10 year master plan is now being developed and is being presented to the cabinet very soon so that that process will happen along with the other institutes uh, that we need to go through uh, in terms of money coming into the sri lankan economy mm-hmm. how is that tracked and why i'm asking this question is we find that sometimes um tourists come to sri lanka on a tourist visa and then probably in the south coast or the east coast they're suddenly running businesses and this is not properly regulated and this also results in locals being denied of opportunities to conduct business carry on business so there are these exclusionary practices that take place and there's no one to regulate it 
again yes that is happening in certain areas i don't want to mention which especially from which countries that is there but uh, we had cases in down south in certain areas and then areas like the east coast there are these issues that coming through but uh, especially led by sltda there is a program now to monitor this system along with our tourist police tourist police also being uh, now being uh, strengthened uh, al along the ministry to uh, you know get, give them guidelines how to track these uh, and especially the check the visas and all that so there is a now a system in place going through it's not going to be done overnight you know you can't just take that up because if you look at countries like especially uh, Thailand and Indonesia very similar cases are happening with certain uh, country representatives who are there they come on holiday and uh, this thing but we can we are now in a process along with the SLTD and the tourist uh, police uh, to justify but not not to justify to take this out of the system to minimize at least to not for this to happen uh, in the fu in future right um there is a gap mm. in ensuring safety of tourists so yeah. sri lanka is not known mm -hmm. for s ensuring safety mm. of tourists mm. this is because you can't go in a bus without getting cat called you can't go on a train without getting cat called um, so there are these issues of harassment mm. of stalking of cat calling yeah. and these are rampant issues this is a systemic issue we mm. face in sri lanka mm. and tourists have to sometimes bear the brunt of it mm. so feeling safe is a prerequisite for anyone to come to sri lanka yeah. what are the measures that are being taken well the thing is this it's if you look at it at, as a percentage is not overall all tourists go through that i would say that's a minor uh, minute number but then again what what pub, what is publicized if there are good 99 things that happens it's that one incident that goes over all over the world as 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 negative for for what happened for example in pigeon island mm -hmm. you know and then recently with the with the three wheeler driver you know that one th yes actually if you look at it if you take testimonials from lot of tourists uh, in coming to sri lanka overall our population our warm heart the hospitality matters a lot to them and that positive message goes through that's why we are next year uh, the thing is about educating people as mm -hmm. well we need to show how uh, important tourists are for sri lanka and how it will grow the economy so we are going to come up with a massive domestic campaign to educate our people mm -hmm. on how important whether whether you are white black or brown or whatever you know how important how we need to look after the we need to remind our people yes we went through a crisis mm. but how important these people are to us because if you remember you know during uh, during the war uh, how uh, when when we, we couldn't recruit soldiers uh, to the forces there was a different type of a campaign so but this has to be like a positive campaign to show the revival of the country how important tourism is to the country and that will be implemented probably the, in the second quarter of next year after the global campaign is very important so sure. we need to educate it. we can't just do it by putting you know rules and regulations whether it, whether you are a three wheeler driver or a bus driver or a train driver or a teen from a school kid uh, to a mother and father we need to tell them we don't need to educate them we need to remind sri lankans who we are we are honest genuine hospitable people don't forget what happening happened during covid with most of the tourists were stuck in sri lanka when they couldn't stay in hotels there are a lot of places that they took him, them to their houses and looked after them if you remember that story even nas daily did a uh, mm -hmm. campaign on that if you remember how hospitable sri lankans how caring sri lankans mm -hmm. are we kept them in our houses so we need to remind our people how to you know ensure that uh, they are protected so that's going to be a social media so, sorry social message for the whole country for the 22 million people because there has to be a local impetus and buy in yeah. and the attitude of sri lankans must be aligned so that they know that we need tourism to um, ensure economic recovery so yeah. you're you're on that 100% on that because like i said it can't be like it can't be in a rule book it's just that we mm -hmm. it's like setting up the mindset of the people mm -hmm. uh, you know even if a kid sees something happening bad they need to report it or they need to prevent it i'm pretty sure there are i have seen enough stories on social media how if in, injustice happens to another people there are other people who stand by for you so we need to educate uh, not educate remind people uh, mm -hmm. to take that message across very positively and actually uh, to take that message as well a different campaign all together from all media networks i request that when i come when we come up with that concept it has to be a common platform for all of it's a social message that we need to take it to our people how is sri lanka tourism uh, utilizing artificial intelligence uh, and technology to um, expedite 
processes? Uh, again, uh, in the past it has been quite slow. We need to actually, you know, bec uh, because it's a government system, you know, to uh, fast track things and get things done. Mm. For example, you know, uh, you, you earlier asked about, you know, how do we, uh, you know, measure our collections uh, in terms of, you know, how, how the tourism industry, especially the Tourism Promotion Bureau and uh, Tourism Development Authority works on the TDL, which is the Tourism Development Levy, mm -hmm. which comes from uh, the one person that comes from um, uh, the private sector you know on the, on their revenue really? yeah it's a tourism development levy is p with the the, the organizations which are registered with the SLTDA right so it's basically 90% uh, of the business whether it's a big conglomerate or a medium or a small scale they are registered so this was developed i think in 2004 where the tourism development authority and tourism promotion bureau gets 1% of that revenue mm -hmm. that comes into the private sector and then 1% is, is that comes to uh, us so that's the funding that we do our promotional program and the marketing and all that so that also needs to be it's, it's in a slow process we are going to digitize that process and take it forward uh, it's a process that we need to implement what you have to understand is right now our priority is the, the the campaign that we need to get out get in but at the same time AI and digitization is very important and that will be a second search uh, stage next year to look into as what well. are the measures that are being taken to um, collaborate uh, and have conversations with other uh, regional um, jurisdictions and across the world for example mm -hmm. um, in China China and the Maldives <coughs> mm. there's a very good relationship and the Maldives uh, expects the highest number of tourists from uh, China yeah. because their branding is all over the place in China absolutely so basically a good good uh, example is what we did with India uh, we had the Thai, Thai conventions travel agents Association of India mm -hmm. we had 650 delegates uh, three months ago in July so they are the biggest organization in India uh, we, we had their general uh, the, the age uh, annual general meeting in Sri Lanka uh, after a long time Time. that was a huge positive uh, this thing and the results are coming in as you can see India is number one uh, and and at the same time uh, China yes we have because China don't forget China opened only on t 20th of April uh, this year mm -hmm. uh, so uh, soon after they opened we did uh, two road shows and we are doing another one in December because uh, their uh, booking pattern starts uh, their holiday starts about February March uh, for that matter and with a social media campaign and uh, uh, there are some senior tourism uh, government official delegate I, I can't confirm that right now will be coming to Sri Lanka in uh, in December where we'll be signing an MOU as well and understanding to promote tourism both ways and especially uh, as a benefit for Sri Lanka another point that you raised about Maldives is very important it's uh, uh, quality versus quantity uh, if you look at uh, the the average uh, exp exp expenditure of a tourist in Sri Lanka it's hundred and eighty dollars roughly whereas small divs is about seven hundred dollars it's very important that we get the correct audience as well uh, you know there's not much of a difference in terms of luxury offering that we give uh, to Maldives or other parts of the world but it's just that we are right now giving almost a five to six to seven star holiday for a three star four star price which is my next question <laughs> yeah we get a plethora of tourists yeah. who are backpackers they manage to book a hostel somewhere uh, by the beach eat from the Chumpang a guy and then uh, you know, so very little money is coming into the Sri Lankan economy. So yeah. how do we attract the high spending tourists? Very good. Actually, we need the backpackers as well. Don't forget those backpackers. Absolutely. Those no backpackers are the CEOs and the doctors and the lawyers of the future. You know, that's what they are. That's what they, that's where they start with. And because I'll, I'll come to the, your point, because backpackers and the low spenders are important because we have the SMEs, the homestays, sure. the small hotels and all sure. that. They need to survive after the crisis as well. The, we are not saying, you know, it's a bad thing. It's a very good thing. Mm. But then medium to high end is very important. I think we in the system, we have about uh, formal sector, we have about 45,000 rooms in the country which is registered with us at SLTD and then out of which I think 9,000 are luxury uh, high-end uh, room accommodation I'm talking about uh, but uh, as you know um, uh, president uh, has a vision in by 2030 to attract 5 million tourists into the country out of that 5 million 2.5 million from the high-end sector mm -hmm. but then that can't be done overnight that's a that's why it's a five-year plan we need to build the infrastructure for it as well don't forget we can't do that with 
thousand rooms and luxury tourism is not only the room the high-end room you know it's the offering as well uh, we need to show how Sri Lanka is comes from high-end luxury point of view like your first question the offerings that we have uh, you know for example marine tourism underwater looking at shipwrecks is high-end you know they bring their million dollar cameras and go under and we go to Kumana one of the biggest bird migrations in the world mm -hmm. again that's high-end they might not spend uh, uh, $500 for a room mm -hmm. but they spend on everything else uh, when they are in that country sure. so very important that we need to identify all those aspects yes we have a vision in 2030 to achieve that 5 million with the 2.5 million high-end market and to market it properly as well Speaking of infrastructure, yeah. let's take a simple example, Chalaka. Mm -hmm. Can a person use a toilet in a train station mm. across Sri Lanka? I mean, this is just, it's not rocket science. Yeah. So th this, is, this is why I asked you the question about collaboration. Yeah. What do you think can be done? It can be done because the thing is we need to work together. For example, now we are starting a project. It's a half done. So for example, Nanua. Mm. It's under construction. Actually, it's, uh, most of the funding is coming through us. Uh, so we are contributing to those effects as well. But then again, uh, those key destinations, for example, Sigiri is going to be uh, the, uh, the first sustainable uh, destination, you know, with correct uh, facilities and all that. So we are going to look go project by project uh, into the tourism zones uh, with the government and the private sector, uh, collaborating to, uh, to, to develop the infrastructure of these people. It's ongoing right now. And then other uh, institutes, the global institutes like the European Union, uh, ADB, the USAID uh, are contributing a lot for these uh, factors as well that is ongoing right now. Chalaka, you um, mentioned a lot of points. Mm. Are these uh, sci are these plans scientifically backed or are they backed by market research? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, Speak especially, to us about that. Uh, yeah. Especially, you're referring to you're referring to the infrastructure side, or you're referring to the marketing aspect the of marketing it. The marketing aspect. Oh yes, definitely. Because the thing is, uh, especially the Sri what Sri Lanka has to offer. If we don't know what we have to offer, we don't need research for that. As in, in terms of what we have to offer, but we need to understand what the Germans want. And in, even in German, I'm just taking Germany as an example. Uh, you know, what does the mature market wants? You know, uh, wellness, and what does the uh, youth wants? The backpacker and what does the medium uh, the families when they travel about this so we need to understand those aspects of it mm -hmm. for example India can be broken into so many segments you know we are talking about 200 million plus uh, uh, middle class and that middle class is high and they know for the first bike to buy uh, first uh, vehicle they have to buy how they they are very well planned how they get married where they get married mm -hmm. and where do they go on their honeymoon Mm -hmm. You know, so those things have been looked into uh, with our general knowledge and the agency that we keep appointed as a strategic communication partner, they had to back it up. Uh, for example, like I said, I, no, I didn't mention this earlier, even though we are coming up with a global campaign, we are not going to go and advertise in 50, 60 countries. We are going for the lower hanging fruits because, because uh, with a limited budget, you can't go over, all over the world. So I, we have identified nine key markets. Mm -hmm. Those nine key markets are India, uh, China. Uh, our traditional market UK, France, Germany, uh, Russia, Australia, uh, three, four countries in Middle East, Scandinavia, uh, followed by Japan and South Korea. Those are, are going to be our key markets for our new campaign. It doesn't mean that we are not going to work on other countries like Italy, Spain, Netherlands, uh, other Asian countries. Uh, for that, we are going to do those influencer programs, the fam tours, uh, the familiarization tours, the media groups and take part in those uh, travel fairs and trade fairs with the private sector. Uh, most of the time, these travel fairs and uh, road shows, what we do is we facilitate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the private sector who takes part. Now, for example, WTM, which is the big, big one of the second biggest European travel fair that is going to happen in London uh, from, uh, from 5th to the 9th of November, uh, 72 Sri Lankan companies are taking part but we are the ones who are doing all the logistics and you know the stall design and everything is done by us mm -hmm. based on the new uh, communication platform so all that is in now being put into place mm -hmm. but the thing is what you have to understand is for the f and we took over the first six for the first six months we were firefighting you know don't mm -hmm. laugh when I say this uh, for the first two three months we had to find fuel to drop tourists back into the airport sure yeah but now it is an amazing recovery uh, that shows the resilience not only uh, of uh, its resilience of the people 
you know how we fight back we were almost five and a half feet under but then we came back you know in a very short and tourism is a best example how we made i'm not saying that we did it alone it's a whole sector the private sector plays a huge role which is uh, the the travel agents association the hotel associations all that played a huge role together to bring this up again Shalaka, my final question when positioning sri lanka um, as a feasible destination for mm -hmm. tourists uh, we can't only be scrambling for dollars we have to ensure that we don't increase the inequalities mm. we have to uh, include the sri lankan people in in the process of tourism uh, from the street vendors to the smes the homestays uh, the micro businesses the large hotels what are your plans uh, well that again uh, this refers to a the question that you asked earlier so you know that is going to be part of our domestic uh, strategic plan as well the domestic campaign from a street vendor to an M uh, sme to a homestay you know how important it is to identify their contribution as well and how they become a part of the system as well so that you know we develop that sector and then uh, we are coming up with this app along with the adb funded app that is going to be this going to be a part of it as well for where they can see and do you know things that the tourists want with this sector of people that's going to be a separate segment altogether and that sector is going to be part of our global campaign as well that's going to be a separate category and a uh, huge uh, you know connection will be given to them to profile them properly as well all right yeah. so things are looking good for sri lanka tourism absolutely yes we are going to achieve the 1.55 million target by end of this year all right yeah. thank you very much chalaka gajapahu chairman sri lanka tourism promotion bureau thank you very much thank you sonali thank you so much thank you for watching us we'll see you again tomorrow good night